Hello friends, in this video we'll look at how the A10 Mini Pro can be used to shape Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras using the HDMI connection from the A10 Mini Pro to these cameras. This combination is great for small sets where you can run fairly short HDMI cables to your cameras on the set and use the A10 Mini to do the control. And you know what, if you need remote control because you either want to sit in a master control room or if you want to sit on a long distance, you can use Skyway controllers and a VPN connection to the ATEM switcher. Do all the work in the studio and sit remotely. We have videos that will demonstrate that, but today we have the RCP next to the ATEM Mini and this RCP from Skyway connects to the ATEM Mini as well as the ATEM software control. So we can see that both places we are changing settings in the cameras. So uh, it's just like the SDI um, a methodology that Blackmagic Design applied to uh, Ursa cameras, for instance, that the SDI output runs back to the camera and that carries the control signals. Now, in this case, it is the HDMI connection coming to the ATEM Mini that also has a data link back to the camera to send out the shading information to the camera. But it's a one-way road and it means that we are not able to get any settings from the camera back into the switcher. It's a one-way road. And this is important when we get to recording in a moment. But let's first look at how the RCP works with the ATEM switcher. So you can see we have the ATEM software control over here and we have the Skahoy RCP right here. It is currently connected to camera number one. You see we have tally from the ATEM switcher. Let's just go to the switching tab here so you can see there we have camera number one. If I now um, make a cut here, you see camera number one is now on preview. By the way, this is nicely reflected on the cameras themselves. So this also goes over the uh, data feedback to the cameras, which camera is on preview. And by the way, they have a little LED on the front here that will tell your talent whether the camera is uh, on program or preview. Or you can purchase a Skahoy tally lamp and mount on the quarter inch thread on the top of the cameras if you want a, a brighter tally lamp for your cameras. Anyway, that's not the point today. Let's go back to the camera shading part and uh, we can now uh, change to camera number two on the RCP. So in fact, uh, normally you would have one RCP per camera because these units with the joystick in a fixed position here, they are really designed to, to be uh, one for each camera kind of surface. You will then line them up, many of them next to each other, and um, and then use the joystick of each one for each camera. Now, uh, in this case, I have a camera selector here on this button. So now I go to camera number two and you can see immediately this is picked up by a label in the display and also the tally bar on the uh, RCP is now changed to red. The iris joystick is the main component of an RCP. So you can see as I'm pulling the iris handle, we see the change to the um, f-stop value right here. And you can also see on camera number two how the shading is actually affecting the image. So it just proves that the data link to the camera using HDMI works. There are many other things you can do in the RCP. Let's just go through some of these. You'll see that Master Black is associated with this encoder. It's also associated with the ring on the joystick. So depending on what you prefer, you can adjust the Master Black and you can see how the black level on the image is affected by this operation. We have access to shutter speed in the camera. We can start recording on off, but let's get back to that in a moment. We have the ability to reset all settings if we want by pressing this button. We can also enable color bars. See, nothing happens when I push this button, but if I hold down the shift key, we can see that we can activate color bar momentarily on the camera uh, by, by doing that. Of course, we want to protect you from putting color bars uh, on a live signal. So this is why we protect it by the shift key. That's pretty clever. Now, uh, this is a menu as we normally do it on an RCP by uh, selecting white black here. We have access to gain and lift settings. So let's just mess the image up a little bit. And now that we are doing this, let's uh, see what's happening in the software over here. So if I expand this view, you can follow that I'm, I'm changing settings on uh, in the software. You can see how um, this little one is moving around and vice versa. So if I change it here, notice what happens on the displays. These settings are now moving around as I'm using the mouse to paint the picture. Maybe this is a good chance to actually reset all parameters. So I just held the shift key, pressed reset all to get back to normal. 
if I go to the next one, I have access to the gamma settings. You can imagine what happens if I uh, change those. And then finally, we are here at the hue, saturation, contrast, and um, also white balance and stuff like that. So white balance is off. If I look at this picture, we can see that we should definitely change the white balance a little bit. So um, let's just do that. We can see the various settings that are available in the um, uh, camera. Uh, are shown here. These values are um, also, let's see if we can find them over here. Uh, let's just collapse. No, wait, it's right there. Right there in, in the software control, you can see the values. So again, perfect correspondence. Let's do the same for camera number one. So I go to camera number one because uh, we also want that one to match up with the uh, first one a little bit better like that. Okay, now let's go to recording. We put recording on this surface, so when I press this button, we'll start stop recording. What we do is essentially ask the atom switcher to record, and in turn, the atom switcher will instruct all the cameras to start recording as well. So I'll press this button. We notice that recording starts on the atom switcher, and we can also see on the cameras that they are now recording to the internal memory cards. One thing very important to know is that the ATEM switcher has to have a disk installed in it. Otherwise, the cameras won't record. If you only want to record here, you still need to uh, insert a USB disk uh, in the ATEM Mini. So you essentially get a, an MPEG-4 recording of the program output from your ATEM switcher. That's necessary. The final thing I want to highlight about this integration is the fact that the Skyhoy Asa piece has a special component that gives you additional features. That's the joystick pad right here. Now this is a four-way component, so it actually detects uh, pressure-sensitive press in the left and right dimension and also top-down. You can assign that to, for instance, pan and tilt movements on a PDC camera, but today I assigned it to the zoom function on one of these cameras. Now, you can adjust zoom, focus and iris on a lens attached to these cameras, but it depends on the lens whether they'll pick it up or not. Both of these lenses are sensitive to the iris adjustment. We already saw that. We can use the joystick here to adjust the the iris of this camera, and we could shade the master black. We can change to the second camera over here, camera number two, and now I have control of the um, lens on this one. But this one also supports zoom coming from the um, Blackmagic camera. So when I press the, the joystick pad here, you'll see that I'm able to zoom in and I can also zoom back again. And even if I press lightly, I'll have one speed of zoom here. Let's see if we can do that. And if I press hard, then it's going a little bit quicker. So there is some kind of sensitivity to the pressure that I'm using to zoom in and out. So that's a special feature of the RCP right here. And it, it shows that we, depending on the lens, have access to lens-specific features uh, with these cameras. We think this is a wonderful and very uh, powerful setup that we have right here. And we also think that if you are doing remote production, which is are becoming more and more popular. It's uh, a very good fit to have a Skyhoy controller in this mix. You can also see that it would be impossible for you to use the software application to both do camera shading and at the same time vision mixing. So it's really important you have uh, tactile control surfaces to do your video production when you are accessing that many parameters. Just think about it, you have audio, you have media selection, you have camera control and switching all in one software application, but you need hardware uh, units to break this out and have the tactile control so you can keep your eyes on the road, so you can keep your eyes on the screen when you do visual production. That's key to a successful live show.